Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I'm glad to be here after I missed two years. You know, Delhi has become part of my home. So I've been here for the last four or five years, and it was very interesting and pleasant. Even today, I sent an email to Mr. Uh, Nitin Arora. He's in Chiragon in Bangladesh, and he's from Gurgaon. I told him, you don't know how much you're missing in Delhi. Anyway, so he was jealous. Is my voice too strong? OK. Look, the subject today is very complicated a little bit when it comes to culture, when it comes to leadership. When, you know, there's, what I found is, you know, in the last five, you know, I started, let's, let's start from the beginning. I started about 2001. I think you never heard about lean manufacturing before. I started in Sri Lanka with a company called Timex, where we built the first modular team of seven operators from cutting all the way to pad garment, doing New York Jones dresses over 68 SMV. This is the first experience, was it? And that's the time where I learned a lot about Asian mentalities. So I was fresh coming from Canada. And I thought, you know, like the way it works in Canada, it will work here in uh, Sri Lanka as well. I will tell you, I faced a lot of challenges, failure, success. It's always been like this. So through the years, you know, since 2001 up to 2013, I think I discovered a lot about the way how to work in India and Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. And one thing I was telling Mr. Uh, Upal last time is, I learned one thing about India. They said, if you want to do business in India, if anybody tells you I'll try, it means they never try. Unless they confirm, they will take action. And since that time, you know, I keep listening to every person. So let's make this shorter. You know, there's a lot of misconfusing about, uh, there's a lot of confusing about lean and lean and lean. And lean is becoming like a buzzword now. It's like a picnic. So uh, if my friend or my next door company just build their processes, with, you know, I get distracted with uh, a lot of shares going on. No, I just, uh, I'll talk faster. I'll speed up. We're done now. OK. So you know, I'm going to take over the slides. You know, people talk about effectiveness and effectiveness and effectiveness. And I keep hearing this word, you know, we have an effective management system. We have an effective uh, production concept. We have an effective methodology. here. We have effective relationship and all that. And at the end of the day, really, where is this effectiveness? So when you start talking about the top management, CEO, COO, GM, factory manager, in charge, supervisor, operator, engineering, la, 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 and all goes to the engineer because we believe that the work study department, they're going to make it all happen. You're going to discover today is start from your MD, goes to your CEO, and move all the way to your COO before it is even the GM level. There's a lot to be done in order for us. So effectively, it doesn't come only by just changing production lines and changing practices, this is not effectiveness. Effectiveness is related to your strategic objectives. If I ask every one of us today, you know, what are your strategic objectives? Everybody knows it. Deliver on time, quality, and cost. So what are your critical success factor in relation to those three criteria that as a strategic objectives? There's nothing. So how are you going to build KPI, which I was talking yesterday, building KPIs, building system in your company, and you have no link between what you're doing on floor level all the way up to your strategic goals. And this is where the industry is dying today. Today I got a, some person, I think from third uh, right side, he asked me, you know, like for the last 24 years of your experience, I said, let's stay in Asia. I'm not going to talk about Canada because we have so much advanced companies in Canada. If you take Peerless Canada today, they're still operating, doing men's suit, and nobody can defeat them. Why? I will tell. It's a long story. I'm not going to talk about it. So come back to this. You know, like uh, he was telling, what's the best company have you seen so far in South Asia? I'm not going to talk about Southeast Asia and the Far East. I told him, it's very hard to say. If I could say today, probably I could refer to some company in Sri Lanka, which I believe today they are world-class companies. But if you look at the effort they spend and the time they spend and energy for the last 10 years in building and building and building, where the management, they spend over 60 to 70% on training, training and education, 
And today, when you look at them where they are today, like you cannot be deep. I know Nike today just signed up like a marriage contract, blind date uh, contract. And they will never walk. He said, you know, you walk into this group without mentioning the name, like you freak out. The way these people, they talk, the style, the culture, the management, how it's driven from top to bottom, those are called world-class companies. It's not like just a couple of slides you show in here. He said, we improve this, we improve this, we improve this. The bottom line is at the end of the day, I ask you, show me your profitability growth. Probably you make a couple bucks. You make a little bit of rupees here and there by changing a little bit, by cutting down. Look, I'm talking about some slides. Instead of showing the slide, I prefer to talk directly. So when, when, when you try to save, you know, like, just tell you the story behind, behind, you know, lean manufacturing. So when lean manufacturing came out, it came, you know, from a book, uh, The Time That Changed the World, of James Womack in 1990. He was doing a survey on automobile industry. And he called it lean because what he saw is a Toyota was a company creating values to customers and to their own people. It's not because there's a system, physical system, it's called lean. And still, after five years in the, in the NCR, still I'm hearing people talking, your system charge, you think it will work in my company with my people and everything? And I don't know why people still refer it as a system. It's not a system at all. It's a philosophy. So lean is not a tool. It's a rule. You want to talk about strategic objective. You want to build your company. You want to grow. You want to make a profit. You need to establish some kind of rules, philosophy, styles, management, culture in order for people to be in line to common purpose, and that's what it's all about. But how do I make this? Today I'm gonna to take you through the process. I will tell you it's very heavy documents I have here. I'm gonna take you through a lot of analysis we have done as a summary, so you could take as much as you want. You could take pictures even of those, but I cannot share those documentation because are confidential for certain clients that we dealt with in Bangladesh. So I'm going to keep it, but you could have this presentation from OGTC. There's no, but not the example because totally confidential. But I'm allowed to show it to you here on board as well. So the pursuit of perfection, effect, perfection. Toyota is looking for perfection, not effectiveness. And uh, they're called the elegant solution today. Talking about effectiveness, it's... It's, it's, becoming, it's becoming almost primary purpose, you know, in any company. It's a principle today. Then you say, you know, like, it's a principle. Tomorrow you build up, tomorrow you build up a list of your management principles. You set principles for management, and you put effectiveness as a primary. But when people ask you the question, what do you mean by this? And how is cascade to the, all the levels from top to bottom? And this is what we, only, we don't have. So effectiveness is an order, you know, for you to achieve your company goals. So it means when I measure your effectiveness in a company, I don't look at just the KPIs. Your growth ratio is enough for me. So as an MD for a company today, why should I bother with so much on the floor level? Talk about KPI pieces, talk about KPI hours produced, talk about KPIs, you know, absenteeism, and other. It's not my job. It's not the job of a CEO as well. So that's why yesterday I was mentioning about the confusing between KPI and core objective of a company. They're not the same. So today I show you a little bit related to those core objectives as well. So coming back from this, I was telling you all the stories about the apparel and everybody said, we are lean practitioners. You just tell me now. Toyota took them 40 years to become a lean company. We started lean manufacturing just in time, over 24 years. And I'm still learning as a consultant, which I work for Wonderbra. We shut down the plant for six months because we had a hit from Walmart where we signed contract with Walmart, we could cancel any order on a ship or on a truck, doesn't matter. And we had an order one time over $6 million and Walmart just stopped it. We said, this is, doesn't work anymore. Then the challenge started becoming, you know, from Asia, you know, the, the growth of the big company, giant company from China, Philippines, uh, Vietnam during that time, Sri Lanka and all that. We start losing efficiency. Why? Our production went from million pieces to 10,000 pieces, then to 5,000 pieces, and became today 5,000 pieces. Wow, it's a huge order. But you don't like it, 5,000 pieces. But the efficiency went. Wonder Bra used to run over 125% efficiency plant. I'm talking average efficiency. You walk through the floor, you never see. I think it's by nature, the Canadian company, they were efficient 
because you know salaries is big major factor for us and cost is big issue but in Asia everybody said you know cost is not important here cost is not important uh, you know that paper labor is cheap but tell me that cheap labor that you call it pays you back the everything of the company and this is what it generates from the bottom so it doesn't mean like I pay 2,000 or 3,000 rupees uh, that's okay it's not cost but that 3,000 rupee makes a lot of thousands of rupees for you in terms of sales or to pay back as well your revenue in terms of overhead and all that to contribute. Am I talking too fast? Is it clear? I told you I'm always get excited. I love this industry and I love uh, what I do. And if I become a teacher even one day, believe me, I could teach like nonstop because I love to see people growing. And this is what it makes me a leader in this. It's not just about you know chasing people just to get a contract here. Trust me, I don't need a business. Trust me, I don't need a business. I've been in this enough, and I have five years of plan for George Asda, covering all their factories worldwide. So it means I have enough work. So coming back to this, you know, like, so when we move back to the small quantities, what happens is our efficiency went from over 100% above, it will drop down to 45, 35%. Why? The change over, the fashionable style, the fast turnaround of styles and all that, you know what they did, Juan de Bra? They were very intelligent. They shut down one plant in Quebec, they shut down the plant in Montreal, and they said, guys, let's pick up our effort, energy, rebuild it, and we started again. And today it's still running. We built all in six months on a just-in-time philosophy, delivering to orders in seven days, to Sears, to Labbe, to uh, Sam Simons, to all these major retailers, department stores, deliver in seven days and I tell you this is what you're facing today on the local market people you know the local market is a big market here more than exporters even if you want but the challenge is the speed the just in time so Indian market is progressing now in just in time and I know that from Bangalore when I worked with Pratika Parel I worked with Indusfila as well in the past and, and I'm talking about 2003 2004 and they were all talking about just in time during that time so today is 2012, we're heading 2013, we're still talking lean or not lean, just in time or not just in time. And I believe the necessity for just in time is more for the north than the south. Do you agree with me? I've been seeing styles all over the company, so complicated, so many processes between washing, mending, uh, manual breeding, you know, just name it. The list doesn't end. It takes time now today to start really thinking strategically about what we should do with the business or we go this way or that way. Otherwise, you're going to keep struggling forever and I don't know what's the future will count for you. So what we did is six months we shut down, we opened back and the company still run. And this is where, and today there's about 4,000 I think small contractors, they still exist, no not 4,000, I think uh, less than 1,000. Across Canada, yes 4,000. I forget the number, they're still running. Doing jeans, doing this, all contracted, you know, they do denim and uh, bottoms and all that. Six, seven operators standing up and operating in team concept. And they're still beating prices. You know, when you think about it, how they are able to do this, compared, you know, like we cannot do it. Why? India has a lot of talents. India has a lot, of, it's a big infrastructure in India. You got everything you want in place. But we're not using it. We got talented people, we got infrastructure, you know, you just name it. You know, when I come to Delhi, I always tell my wife, my wife, she come, you know, the only country in South Asia my wife's come with me is to the India. Because she said, you know, like being in Delhi is like you being in North America. Everything is fashionable. Everything is luxury. You got the best hotels, you got the best restaurants, you got the best movie theaters and all, you got it all, you know. Education-wise, like you go over the internet, you see only Indian, 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 rewards, books, and this and that. So where are they? Why are they not part of the garment industry? Because garment industry, it's a home-based industry. It's not a world-class manufacturer today? I don't think so. So to make this shorter is, you know, the story is about being lean and all that. Don't trap yourself into just by moving because everybody said lean is good without understanding what it's all about. Without understanding. So to come back to this, you know, when when I started in Bangladesh, if you, if you want to, 
I could cover this, don't worry. If you don't read it, I'll cover it by talking. I know by heart. Uh, in Bangladesh, I, I promoted lean in 2004, before OGTC here. We started with OGTC. 350 people at the Sheraton Hotel were laughing at me. <laughs> they called me the actor. I was standing at the podium and said, Charles is amazing, you know. It's like a thriller movie, you know. But how can you do it? This is Bangladesh. Today, you walk on the street in Bangladesh, even the rickshaw guy tell you, now I'm using lean lock. Even the tri show tell you I'm becoming lean, you know, I'm shorting my, my compacting my tri show and all that. Any industry, any factory in Bangladesh, they talk about lean, lean, we are lean, we are lean, we are lean. And you cannot imagine how many consultants are in Bangladesh today. And I just laugh out of my shoulders. I said, you know, it took me 24 years and I'm still learning today. And today you look at the market in Bangladesh, there is over 3,000 Sri Lankan are lean expert. There's at least 100 from India. There's like 10,000 Bangladeshi, they're all consulting today because they learn a little bit about lean in one factory. They move themselves and they say, we are lean. I could do the same thing as I did at this factory. Is the industry photocopy shop? You just copy it from one place and the other, but everybody missed what I'm gonna talk today about it. They missed the whole culture, how to build it up. So I think I'm here to sell myself. Look, I told you, uh, it's not about selling. I, I'm going on retirement. For the last two years, I said I'm gonna retire, but I'm still working. I can't, st I can't stay away from it, I love it. So the common purpose, like you look at today, other industry, like you could look at Apple. Why you never call Apple Lean as an example? I go to Apple store, it takes me two minutes, I buy anything, they charge me on their iPhone and I'm out, the iTouch. What, those, they're not lean? You look at Bell Canada, you look at uh, Post Canada, Post Canada delivered in 24 hours, guarantee. It means you sleep on your pillow, you send an email, you send a mail, well, how do we send mails today? But when you send a mail, the next day you got it. Their system of communication, go to Singapore airport. Have you been to Singapore airport? Check it out, probably you never notice it. Singapore airport, even when the luggage come to the, on the belt, the handle of the luggage is toward the customer. So you don't have to waste it like I do in Bangladesh. I have to step on the belt, put my feet over it, try to get my luggage, people over each other and all that. You never find this in Singapore. Now, to link those to the immigration, you see direction in Singapore airport. They tell you, go to lane airport, you know, from this gate, you go to immigration number five lane, and this and that, why? They have a time management system to analyze it all, and you never spend three minutes waiting in queue even at the immigration. Delhi airport is getting better. Probably they're going to leave, but they don't know it, but it's getting better and better, which I like it. I never spend too much time at the eyes today and every, but when you talk about, you talk like even uh, McKinsey, the healthcare system in Quebec today, the prime minister said, we're all going applying lean tools in the healthcare. The hospitals in Montreal now, they're all going into customer value. So we, because our system, Medicare system is free, so we don't have to swear because it's a free, you know, you sleep at the emergency for 24 hours, then we treat you. No, you get there five, 10 minutes, you have to see the doctor and go out. You don't have time. So all have one thing in common is customer focus. Customer focus, customer focus. And I'll tell you something, gentlemen, all of you here in the north, you have better relation with customer than the south here. I know that. When we wrote the first book, I don't know if you read the book about the best practices in sourcing for Commonwealth countries. I was one co-author of this book. And you see there's a big article even about India, how the North is well prepared, you know, because you have, you have this marketing intelligence. But when you shift it to the garment and you start producing, you forget it. So we're more driven into manufacturing and you forget the rest of it. So if you look at, at all these companies, everybody has one common thing. It's one common purpose, customer focus, customer focus. And please allow me to say, when I say customer, is not just uh, my friend Asda, or Walmart, or uh, La Perla, or whatever, you just name it, or H&M uh, and all that. My people are my customers too. What I mean by my people? The relation between the merchandiser to give the next customer to you the cutting, and the cutting to the sewing, and the sewing. We never measure them. The only thing I keep hearing, you know, we have a problem with the fabric, delays in fabric, this and that. And what's the management is taking action? We cannot deal. So why are you looking for improvement then? If you cannot improve your supply chain backward, backward linkage, 
So why you are in business anyway? So stay where you are, suffer with what you have, and don't complain. Because production flow, they're not going to give you miracles. They're not going to make miracles if you get this. But there's a way to do it. In Canada, we used to have um, fabric comes late. We used to import all the fabrics. But our duty doesn't take, like, uh, to clear the goods doesn't take 24 hours. In a couple of hours, it's clear. The truck is in the factory. But still, though, we built a system where it can react in half an hour change over when the fabric arrives in the house. So we, we adapt our system to the challenge that we have with the supply chain. Rather than sit and we just keep complaining, we cannot get the fabric on time. You all know it, and you all know your delays. So why your structure is not built to absorb those delays? This is another fact, but how we do it. So these are another issue which I like about resources, resources optimization. You know, like everybody's talk about operators. Everybody talk about extra manpower. I think last time we did with Manish, I think at Orient Fashion. Even we did some analysis on the cutting room. Even we, we doubled the labor salaries. Even if I don't need them, I doubled them. And I still I make big reduction in cost. I'm not lying. Mr. Manish is here. He's my big gentleman, you know, supporting the project. Uh, he's CFO. So when you look at it, labor is not just the issue for you to reduce cost. What's happened to your overhead? What's happened to your cutting table maximization? The space, the overhead over it, the management style, splitting production floor up and down. You get management down, you get management up and all that. What's happened to all this? So to be able you to understand, you know, you need some kind of strategy to understand what you need to focus on in order for you to deliver. Most of the people that tell me, Charles, I want to improve productivity. I told him, you know the link culture, what it said? We don't believe in the word improve. We believe in the word casual factors. I got a problem somewhere. The first thing I'll do is I'll assess what is blocking me from performing to achieve my KPI, as an example. So I don't jump right away into the final equation. And I say, you know, what is blocking? What's, uh, what's to improve here? So we never need to improve. When you say improve productivity, you still don't know where. But when you say what's blocking me, you are able to niche them down one by one in order for you to troubleshoot them and eliminate them. And this is the difference between a lean thinker and traditional thinker. So the word improvement doesn't exist anymore. We talk about roadblocks to understand, and this is where management, they miss the boat, how to troubleshoot and, and the role and problem solving techniques. So let me show you one. Uh, so I covered all this, so see how fast? Just show you KDS in uh, Chiragong, which I'm allowed to show you. I have no problem. We just evaluate them last in July uh, 2012. I'm going to zoom on the aspect where we evaluate lean. This is what we evaluate. Some companies, they said, you know, come and see my company, Charles. Look, I have visuals. I have a line system. Uh, I have good practices. I have SOP. Uh, look, look, beautiful. It's lean. This is for us counts only 15 to 20%. Evaluation is evidence. It's see facts. It's not about people what they're telling you. We don't listen. KDS, they started three and a half years back in Chirag. We started under the George project, as the George. They achieved after nine months only 23% lean scoring, and it was a big hit where every customer coming to visit them, it looks nice, it looks nice, because everybody's focusing on beauty salons, how it looks nice, decoration, uh, modular team, clean machine, people, they have uniforms, uh, all nice. But when it comes as an expert, I don't look at it. I start from the MD, from the chairman, and I start understanding their thinking. And if you look at first, the first one start with is called policy, performance policy deployment. It means how do you perform all from top to bottom? And how you all connected from top to bottom? Is there a policy in this company? No, not sure. Don't worry. We do improvement. You know, sometimes we analyze our KPIs. All this, I call them in English, balloony stories. Means, you know, you just put the needle, pop, it goes up. So if you look at it, I'm not going to go over these details. This, uh, this conference is not about how to evaluate lean, but just to tell you, management commitment to lean practices. These are most important elements. 
in every factory, people said, you know, Charles, we are on board. We help you. At any time you want, just knock my door, come and see me. Really. But what about if the manager really roll up his sleeves and work a little much harder and educate, grow his people with him and all that? Some companies we started, this is how we enforce top management. We called it the boot camp training. You know, when you go to the boot camp, it means you force people to get trained in order for us to make them understand. Because if my chairman doesn't understand, I don't want him to do the job. But if he doesn't understand and, and believe in the way we're going to take it and becomes a strategic approach for the business, then CEO and COO and the other level top management that could take it forward for the whole company. I'm not talking about group because lean goes company-wise, then you link the group after all. So commitment, slow promotion, and rewards teamwork. You know, everybody said, you know, we have a teamwork here. We have a teamwork. We have a teamwork. Teamwork, teamwork is part of respect for people. What it means is teamwork. People collaborating. You know, you go to every company, they have a team concept. You look at them, nobody talks to anyone. Why? In this company, there's discipline. Nobody chat. Really? So what's the, what's the benefit of a teamwork? It's not toward the common objective, the product, the quality, the delivery, the performance of the team and all that. There's no chit chat. I said, that's nice too. You know, like even supervisors, like the policeman standing there. You know, the story, I'm sure you all know it, so I'm not going to talk about it that much. So, and, and like uh, promoting people and redeploy people in our company, give them better position. You see potential staff and all that. They cannot be promoted. Why? Until somebody really leave after 25 years, then you promote him? You know, somehow, somehow you need to accept people even leaving your company because they have no choice. They need to grow. They don't want to stay where they are. You know, when I started my career, I left one abroad. You know why? Because I know I'm going to stay between four walls. What am I going to get after being chief engineer? What am I going to get in this company? And I know my potential can be much bigger than that. So I'm going to wait for uh, Mr. Alfred uh, until uh, he leaves the company and he's the owner as a president. So, so, you know, and it's part of Sara Lee. So how can I take over him? I can't. So I told him I'm going to do consultancy. I'm going to start delivering whatever I know. And I could create a challenge environment for me where I, every time, every day, I'll challenge a new situation. And this is where I started consultancy, but I kept working on part-time, and I left after two, three years back, and I became, in 1996, uh, Dagger Group Consultant in Canada. You Building a culture of value thinking. Most of the people know, you know, keep the employee working, this is value thinking. Do it by the dozen, it's cheaper. Value thinking is... How you create a value to your customer or to your own people? So if I create overproduction in a company and I'm supposed to deliver to the next process in half an hour or 10 minutes, whatever it is. So where's the link of value, value thinking here? It's going to take a lot to change the mindset of the people to become more like a business sense in terms of thinking. So this is another thing where we build it in those factories in Bangladesh 12 factory. You will see the result at the end. I'll show you some results at the end of 12 factory. So there's a list, long list. The market approach, we talked yesterday about the pricing, you know. We said we always have a price as per the marketplace. But the price, my gentlemen, is not by the one that you just estimated because I know this gentleman, this buyer here will buy it at 500 rupees or 300 rupees. So I'll make it 300 rupees and I force my people on the floor to deliver it. No. This is not target costing. Target costing is built on budgeting, and I'm going to show you a little bit today. So this is the evaluation. So KDS, after one and a half year, they came back into the project, and they considered their lean, but they came back into the project, and they jumped to 61. They really built the culture. If you look at every department in their company, from offices to the housekeeper, they have KPIs. And all the KPIs are integrated to the same final objective, which it leads you. You will see some today as well, which leads you back to your profitability goal. They have short-term goals, which related to orders, and they have long-term goals where they think about creativity and innovation. It means, today, look, am I boring you? I hope not. Uh, I don't want you to fall asleep. Because sometimes people, they come to a workshop, they just wait for pictures. I told you lean is not about pictures. It's management course today. But I'll show you some video clip, a uh, couple video clips, especially there's a lot of mid companies here. Anyway, to come back to this, what I was talking about. Uh, so they linked the entire company together, and today they scored 61%. And we're going back with them 
for another one year to build the full cost management system where for that time they could guarantee prices to buyer and make it happen in their own manufacturing because the whole culture is being built and today you'll see how they build it as well. You will see some reality. And you know that it takes a lot of efforts. It's not one year, it's not two years, it's not three years, but as long as you know where you're going and you have a timeline so you are able to hit it. So moving from this, you see at the end only, total productive, these are little things which everybody's focusing on them 100%. But this is not what I worry about. Anybody, you know, you get a copy from each other, but that's fine. Organization and effectiveness. As we said yesterday, it starts from strategy. If there is no strategy, and the strategy is linked to your customer, we're talking about customer focus. So today, if you look at our, our projects in, uh, with our buyer for the next five years, it's called building customer focus, lean supply chain. It's nice word. The sentence is, it's like a slogan now, you know, building. What does it mean? It means from the mill to the store. And part portion of it is manufacturing. So where we started, we started from the factory base. There's a lot of financial analysis to make sure priority one, owners maintain their profit as being desired by them or as planned. Second, employees get fair wages, which is one of the major objectives to get better life. Third, probably after two, three years, you maintain certain level of costing formula for me. Where can link back to the development center of the buyer where they know exactly the factory, how they structure, and they are able to build their style and their costing from their house before even they ask the factory to negotiate. This is where most of the buyers are looking for today for a long-term relationship. And I'll tell you, you could have short runs as you could have a huge volume as well. This is the future, culture, leadership, which I'm gonna cover today. So alignment is a key element. And we always said lean manufacturing, it creates a common language, common purpose. But how can we speak the same language when we're not totally misaligned? So alignment, it means we're all driving into the same pipelines all the way to the end to achieve one common goal. So what we do is, we always said, you know, when there's a way, we always said, you know, think within the box, and I'm telling you, get out of that box, trust me. Get out of your factory, look at it around, understand what's happening around the world, read magazine, you know. You know, I was, I was last time at PM Pro with, uh, with Mr. Brijesh and all that, and we were talking about, you know, I learned a lot. Today, especially, you have, you have the technology where you could search a lot on internet. During my time, I'm very old, in the 80s and 90s, we didn't have that much information on internet. We used to attend seminars like you come here. We used to read books, searching, finding, you know, in order to learn and then compare it back. And we used to force our staff, like you come here today, you should do a presentation to your company owners and then tell them what you have learned today here. How can you adapt back into your company to make it better? And this was a chance for the people to go out and learn. So what I'm now telling you today, there's, the sky is unlimited. There's always better and better way and you're talking about effectiveness and innovation, there's always a better way, just get out of the box and find it. But find it is, I don't know if you all do this exercise, the mind map. You know, if I look at, you know why I talk so much? Because my mind is really good like this. I could see the whole industry in one picture, which I call the large scale picture. Do you want to see, you know, you, today you count on your work study to come and do certain improvement in your company. What do they know work study or engineering department? They know only about the practice and the process. You never give them even access about finance. They have no clear idea, you know, what's our other area connected to that process. If they make a change here, can impact the other side. No, it's okay, we'll do it only here. Then the owners comes or MD or GM start complaining, complaining. We didn't see any result at the end of the day. And this is our major problem in Delhi where people, they said, consultant is not good. Total misunderstanding, the mind map, it means if today you sit down, you said, this is my objective, here is time management. You said, this is my objective is, I want to have a just in time. Just in time, it means you start drawing. 
oh, there's the merchandise, the fabric problem, this problem, this problem. Then you write down the merchandise, the engineering, this problem, that problem. You will have a whole picture. And you said, how organize it and put it in the right way to improve it? And trust me, the industry is worse than this even. It's worse. So when you look at this, we use the McKinsey 7S framework. I think some of you, they don't use it probably. You never probably heard about it. It's a McKinsey company where it's been done by, we call the seven internal aspects that any organization should be aligned, you know, should be followed in order to align its own organization for better success. The formula is here. It's on the screen. Starting from strategy, you are able to build systems. It means I built tomorrow production teams and practices and processes and all that, but how do I link them to my strategy? Then how do I create a structure in terms of the system, the flow, the budgeting, the target cost? How do I analyze all this? And once those done at strategic, these are easy. You know, the consultant or yourself, he could sit down in an office and do it all on paper for you, and everything is nice. But now, bring it back as shared vision and shared value to share it with the, the style of your management, with your staff. There's a style, there's staff, and there are skills. All these six elements, they are connected through a shared core values. What are the shared core values? It means the leadership today, the responsibility, the culture, the way your company has to move, uh, your KPIs, your driver, your problem solving, your, 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 your. The package is too long. So if I take those lists, you're going to keep seeing them slide after slide. If I take the strategy as an example, we're going to consider, like everybody said, two things are important today, customer and profitability, right? Otherwise, there's no business. If I don't have sales, if I don't have a customer, a good relationship, I don't have approach. And even if I have the customer and I have a great relationship and I don't have the right cost, the right timing, the right this, and make money at the same time, there's no relationship. There's no business. So if I take those two objectives, sustain profitability and, and customer satisfaction, the first thing I need to understand, you know, what does it require as strategic objective? It means how can I build my company on objectives in order to achieve those two strategies? So what we designed is, these are real examples. This is not uh, training examples. This is what, how we built uh, the ASDA project. So we start talking about customer satisfaction, as you all know. As you all know, uh, on-time delivery, consistency, uh, accuracy in cost and all that, accuracy in quality, and ethical and eco-friendly company today. Today what we did is even, you will see, we built the ethical five into 5S, five and we built the technical standard into the system itself, so there is no need anymore to fix the company when they buy a visit for compliance. Then when you look at about profitable organization, only just in time can make me profitable. Commitment to education and development. Quality people, when I said about quality people, not your quality QC team. I'm talking about developing talented people in your company that they could fit into your structure and strategy. And when I talk about respect for other, which is based on challenging. You know, the respect at Toyota is very interesting. Uh, some people, you ask them, how do you respect each other? Oh, we say good morning, we'll take care of them when they have a problem, we give them loans, we do this and that. But a Toyota is not about money, it's not about this, it's about spirit of challenge. Mutual trust, mutual responsibility, and this is the respect I have toward the people. It's not only one man makes the decision. This is how they encourage people in the companies and all that, and this is what's respect for people. The last one, it's the continuous improvement mind, which you all know it under Kaizen mind. This is the biggest job. To be able to achieve all the above, you could achieve them by any means you could achieve them, but probably at a higher cost, probably at uh, the effort and the energy of other people and all that. The issue is, how can I keep improving those issues to maintain them as they've been planned in order for me, because the target out of your continuous improvement is sustained profitability. What we all do is, for the customer satisfaction, the external, not the internal, but sustained profitability, God bless us, probably will make it, probably not. 
So the continuous improvement is going to link you back to ensure that your profitability is maintained. So to do this, I'm going to take you over. You cannot see it, but I'll take you here over. Uh, so from the strategic objective, we said, what are the critical success factors before I start lean in the company? So I'll zoom it for you here a little bit. You could see it better here. The first thing we start with is see, we need, we need input in this company. It means before I recruit people, I need to understand what the cri selection criteria are to recruit people. You know, like most of the people, most of the industry I've been with, they recruit people based on experience. Me, when I recruited my five, uh, I recruited last time people from Sri Lanka when I started the business. I never based on experience. I based only like if they know the industry. But most important was the behavior for me, the way how they could deal, not how you deal with situation on a daily basis, how way how they react against any problem they face and all that. Today, what you need people with the behavior and thinking mind and mind said totally different. Not with people only technical. So it means if I get this problem, I know do this, do this, it's okay, and the problem solved. I need people that are challenged. And I know that when they had this personality and this character, the characters that I'm looking for, I was able to build it. And today, one of them is still leading the project of Asda by himself. And, uh, and I'm sure when you see him, probably some of you met him six years back, but if you see him today, he's a totally different person. You can't break him and he's unstoppable. Because total, his mind, totally different person. That I could build, but when you get somebody with 30 years of experience and everything, that's very hard, trust me. Because they, they cannot take this equation from their mind that I'm strong enough with 25 years of experience, what are you going to teach me? It's very hard to take it away, and I'm not telling you fire or hire people, but just I'm telling you, today you can to recruit people for the industry, I do it differently. You know Lenny Group in uh, Bangladesh, and Lenny Fashion, I think they're related to Epic as well. Mr. Wasim Sadiq, some of you know him probably, he's from Delhi. He's a leader, you know, person that I admire very much, and he's based in Bangladesh. The way he handles his staff, he's always on a spirit of challenge. Never blaming anyone, never pointing the fingers at anyone. Creates a challenge among them, them and they're challenging each other from floor to floor. His new factory, he realized that I need only educated people to understand sciences. What he did is in his factory, new one. In less than one year, it hits over 92% performance. He got, you all have uh, RFID, you monitor balancing, am I right? And you gave it to your supervisor. He got educated junior guys, strong personality. They understood about SOP, work method, SMV, balancing technique. They get the software on every production line. They sitting the entire day doing there. He removed all the supervisors off the production line and he turned them into garment technicians. He didn't demote them. He told them, you all promoted, you're gonna be the boss now. You educate the operator how they produce when we need you. If the method deviate from the SOP, you bring the method back on track and all that. But let this engineer maintain his production. And I'm telling you, you walk there, you won't see a single aspect. 5S, the quality at the source and all that, because those guys, they have only education in their mind, little bit of experience and all that. They get the strong personality, and they are able to manage only on scientific elements, which creates that component to drive output. I don't know if I make it too complicated. But when you look at it like this, you know, like, I was pleased, I told him, you know, and this is not because of me or because of anybody. It's the leadership in the company. I was a facilitator in this project. We give idea to people, but how many people of you today will take ideas and all that and I'll trust probably two, three percent that will react? So this is the difference when you recruit somebody who's react against a challenge versus the one he got technical experience. He knows how to deal with daily issues. So the issue is was to create criteria to build the criteria in order for us to develop quality people. Today, I know you're all complaining about the, the manpower, but remember something. You build them, you train them. Today, we don't train people even in training school. We eliminated totally from our project to train people in the training school. The training is done on the job. 
you know, like I learned it even from singer a long time ago, you know, we develop operator five days, six days, straight to the sewing line. And most of the people you recruit, even they have experience as well. I thought I'm running out of time. One hour is not enough. But one hour gone already. <laughs> so, you know, there's so much to talk about because I cannot just show you a slide. There's a lot of stories behind every slide and all that. And I believe most of you enjoy more, you know, the, the, the talk show compared to just reading a couple of slides. Because you all like to hear stories. And those stories probably can make you react much than reading just a slide. So to make this shorter, it's all about the human system. The successful factor, you know, the, uh, the critical success factors, you know, to be able to build, to achieve those two strategies of customer satisfaction and sustained profitability is to build the philosophy in our company, to build principles in our company, at least to start from our top management, how to manage, to build system, procedure, structure, and all that in order for us to develop quality people where they are able to train, to enable them to develop, to enable them to perform, to engage, to inspire, and to act, and to, against what? Continuous improvement. How people are going to improve if they're not part of it? So it's a full structure to build up, but doesn't mean like everyone in the company today, they have to know it all. I'm not saying that. There's a way how to do it. I'm going to accelerate a little bit now because the bottom line, I didn't get it yet. So this is the successful factor. We designed even a roadmap. I think Apple is sleeping today. We develop a roadmap built on several phases to be able to build a lean culture in a company. First one is assessing and designing practices, uh, the idea, the future state. Lean operating management system. What most of the people are doing today, only phase one. This is the photocopy shop. Taking picture from one factory, put in the second one. But the whole thing is uh, now how there's a culture, there's shared core value to share with people, there's a skill to develop, there's a style in the company, there's a staffing people, there's unified management system to integrate. What about all this to make it drive? So what we, if I keep going, developing talent people, you know, if I look at the chart, look at how big. It's very big, the chart. I'm not gonna go over it all, so the lean manufacturer here where we reach, there's a process which I'm going to cover it step by step, but I'll make it a little bit quicker. And at the end is the link culture. Then it moves back into office workflow to connect them to the manufacturing flow. And this is what I could say. I'm a lean company, come and evaluate me. When the lean culture is in place. So leaving from this, just quick look. I cannot go in every detail, trust me. There's over 1,000 elements here. I cannot, uh, I have two hours only. One day I'm going to, we're going to launch courses here about becoming certified lean practitioner. It's going to be courses about six months. So which could take you really in deep learning how to build all this rather than just look at what I'm done. So you become more creative by it and you adapt it to every situation that you face in any company. So if I move into systems, so when I get the strategy, I know the successful factor, I said now. Let's move to the floor level and start looking at areas and all that. So I'll take you quickly on this. The first thing we use some, uh, you know, you all lose in lean manufacturing, you all use uh, value stream mapping, value stream mapping. We don't do that much. We have different things. You know, if I draw the mind ma map. It's one awesome. o'clock. Thank you, my apple is good. You know, even they have now Indian accent. You could put, uh, choose the lady. <laughs> Anyway, to come back to this, so we change even the assessment just to give you an idea. Process flow chart, you all know about it, but we don't use it like people that use it here. We use it totally different for critical path. And then we restructure processes to eliminate critical path. Then we do multi-lane worker diagrams. Sometimes they call them uh, swimming pool. It looks like the lanes of swimming pool where we connect workers with activity. Sometimes we do even activity with processes. What we're trying to see is we're trying to map the entire company to rebuild the management system internally. Then we do even drill down approach. 
the drill down approach is the one led us to create an operating system in the company where we shoot ideas all over the places. Everything, problem, non-problem, relation, and all that, we just, and after that, the consultant will organize them. Or the champion, we do spaghetti diagram, which uh, if you look at, at the office and you do spaghetti diagram, similar to flow diagram, you will see it's messy. It goes like in 100 million direction, the product before it reach even to the technique into the technical part. Then we do, all of you, you know about cause and effect diagram, but hardly I'm using it now. We do a lot drill down diagram, it's amazing. And we build this in our factories, even in Bangladesh, where supervisors, they're practicing today. It's on the floor. And they have why, 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 why. We forced management from the GM to start working on it. Every, so we change, we have IE tools as well. We design different IE tools for assessment related to unproductive time. So value stream mapping, you all know it. Engineer tools. We develop even a tool specially for garment to do order change over. Because in order to change over, there's two factors. There's throughput time and there is unproductive time due to employees. Most of the time, people focus on throughput time. But my money is not the throughput time. That's lead time. But my money is people's involvement. So we focus a lot on unproductive time related to people when change happens. So there are so many things. And at the end, we linked the methods, the tools, with all the KRA that you heard yesterday in relation to the KPIs. Because what we need to do at the end, we need to simulate all the benefits into the KPI to see the progress. So this is how we link them. From that, we come out with a summary. We summarize all the disruption, disruption in the system. We didn't go with the newspaper, we just regrouped them. There was a lot related to management, a lot related to people, but everything related here is all to management anyway. There's nothing related to operators. From that, what's happened? You want to see some video clip? It's very long. Uh, can I show it to you at the end? Because if you run out of time, uh, I'll show it to you at the end. I prefer. Uh, I will make it happen. I'll accelerate. Oh, how come we get this? Even we created, we created all the changeover where merchandise that report all the changeover uh, quality department they report. We create one technical pack, which uh, we call the values engineering, which all information goes all the way to modular system. Otherwise, nobody will operate in the manufacturing floor. Because if you do the analysis, you will see it's less cost if you let them wait and do it in the last day when everything is in place. People that are, you know, like. You know, work method is all based on continuous motions. It's not like, you know, do a little bit, move it here, then wait, then change it. Uh, anyway, video clip, we'll check it back later. So now moving into the structure. Let me take you straight what we have done instead of reading of this. What we did is, because this is the explanation of what I'm going to show you. What we did, we started with value stream. When we, when we assessed the entire company, the to come to restructure it, we said that, how can we regroup processes now? Who's going to be working with whom? How are we going to, because remember, in my mind, it's still profitability is my goal. Customer satisfaction is still my goal. It's not about, you know, it's okay because this gentleman is good in cutting room. Sorry, I'm not looking at you. I forgot this people. So if this gentleman is related to cutting room, it's okay. I isolate him for the cutting room and this guy is for the song. Why? If my strategic objective requests me to be able, because I run a fashionable industry, fast turnaround is the best for you to run by value stream structure. What it means, it means my merchandiser, my cutting, my sewing, my finishing, my, my, whatever it is, put it under one cost formula and get it done in one point flow. Zara strength is many companies without Zara, even in, in Singapore today and even in China, there are some companies they call in just in time too, which they brought the merchandiser in the middle of the house, lobbying on the sound floor with the sample room. You want to create impact much faster? Look, you run the styles, 1,000 pieces, 2,000 pieces. The merchandiser is in the head office. Uh, the quality per department the stores is somewhere else and all that. And those people, they don't have a relation? 
So let them live the problem as you live it on the sewing floor. Let them live the problem. This is, I'm not telling you tomorrow you need to change by various means, but you need to look at it, what is best for you to make a change. You need to look at it, the lead time issue, the quality issue, the cost issue, and all that before you structure the system. So very, so you one thing what we did. So everything is related back to the costing formula target cost. So what we did is we reformulate the process. This is Trouser Insured Company. We shared costs with the company, so we build them up. We brought all the management under one cost here, and we put a plant engineer to manage it. I didn't bring somebody. Uh, we brought the plant engineer to manage it because there's a lot of finance elements, scientific elements. It has to be managed. So from that, we went into restructuring the manpower. So we restructured all the direct minus the direct. And direct for us is all SMV producers. And today, like, I would not allow any person, any company, besides supervisor or manager or anybody, to be standing in no SMV. You want to do this operation because buyers ask you for it? So charge it to the buyer. He doesn't accept it? Deal with it. But I won't allow somebody without SMV on the floor. So we change our waste list even, that you all know the seven type of waste. We have changed them too, to make them more garment-driven waste. So we restructure the budget and the, the departments and all that. Then we move into the overhead, the, uh, the offices side. We rebudget all the offices, and we shared all this cost with the operating expenses. You see all the offices are here. Then we shared the operating expenses. Then we took them all into cost distribution. What I mean by cost distribution, it means we define the ratio, the ratio of, part of contribution for every department. Because remember, I'm creating value streams. And then we shared all the cost crossly through all the department. We compose it until we reach, at the end, the total budget, which include indirect, direct, and all the allowable. It means we allow cost for training. We allow cost for parts. We allow. You know, we measure our mechanic today. Like you said, this mechanic is better than the other mechanic. But when you look at money, what, the good one spent $10,000 to repair the machine. But the one you think is not good, he doesn't spend a dollar, but he repairs the machine. So which one is cheaper for you? We never measure it. We all look at, we jump to conclusion always without seeing facts. So we budget all this, and then we took them into costing formula. And this is where we analyze allowable for production flow. It means what do we allow for me as a person is able to decompose it again and to segment-wise assign it to different area, bring improvement in those areas, and this is where Kaizen activities come on board. But today, you're not at a position to do this. You're still chasing what you have charged to the buyer to make it happen. So the long-term savings is going to happen when your company gets stabilized and you start making profit and your profitability is sustained. Then you said, now we're looking at long-term savings. So you are still chasing costs. So you're not at the boat to look for long term yet. So from that, we create operating system. I'll show you what I mean now. When we create the practices, SOP, processes, value stream, cost, and all that, now we said it takes a management system over all this. So we create our management system. I'll show you cutting room quickly. It's based on structure, method, system, and quizzes. It means every person go through training has to pass at least 70% of the quizzes. It means he has to master. Otherwise, he doesn't fit. Even companies now in OGGC who I'm working with, and one thing I'm starting now with the top management, and every manager from CEO, he's going to go through quizzes. Otherwise, I cannot make sure this culture is being cascaded. Because the top one will teach the one under him, and the one under him will teach the other one. And this is where we create one chain of reaction in terms of training. It's not the consultant does it all. I'm a facilitator. I'm not a consultant. My job is to guide you, and it's up to you to make it or not. So don't come and blame me at the end of the day if I fail or not. So what we did here is we change, we eliminate master planning. We create all the inventory in one company in a cutting room. All the lists required, whatever. We design every tool, every trolley, every information system and all that. Why are we doing all this? Remember, the last, the hardest part at the end is the skill. Skill of the top to the bottom. We need to deliver something to the people. We need to build it up. 
So when, then we create the layout and the zonage and all the area. You see here it's connected to the sawn floor, the cutting table, which they do bottoms. They do shorts, cargos, uh, chinos. Then we create the staffing and we have procedures, how it works. Then we, and this is, you know, it took us one day to do it. it does, it's not too long. If you know where you're going, it's very easy to connect. Then we create for the short floor. Then we create the procedures again. But the nice about all this, we centralize all the information through cut job list. What I mean by cut job list like this. It means the marker information, the number of uh, layers, the length, the Kanban sizes, the size breakdown of the marker, the bill of material, the location of the bill of materials, any remarks related to sewing, the accessory transfer to which department, because some accessories they don't go to uh, sewing because they go with the cut from the cutting to the sewing and all that. We design a system where we gather all the information from merchandisers to eliminate master planning because all this goes to the engineering department for planning, which we designed the software for it. We didn't do it, the factory had done it. And from that, they create their, uh, I'll take the role of the IE operational planning. I'm sorry, you will have the slides. I cannot read them one by one because I will never finish. So you have the procedure for the IE, you have the procedure for the stores and the cutting and charge and all that. So we design all this. The Kanban flow, how we flow the Kanbans in the company, raw material, blah, blah, blah. And we create a cutting planning board. Cutting planning board, as you see here, everybody said, you know, today I cut this, this is how much I got. What do you do with this? Nothing. Here the cutting manager doesn't plan, doesn't have a master plan. He has only assignment, comes from engineering department, controlled by engineering, which gets all the information, quality reports, uh, whatever you want to name it, we call it technical pack. It's a part of value engineering go through IE operational planning. And from that, what they do is they make sure the markers cannot be printed if the bill of material is not entered. We create the triggers in the software. And the engineer that cannot print the bundle card if the market information is not in the system. So we create them all connected. So at the end, the key is when the bill of material comes and the cut job comes and all that, engineer build the SMV value for the cutting room to align the cutting manager for planning so what we do after that, the entire cut, and this first initial cut is planned after that as a pull system. The operator will pull the cut. There's no master planning at all, totally eliminated. But this is when you do small runs. It's ideal now. If I have a cutting and a sewing and all these together under one package, it's very easy to float and control cost. But today what you have, you have cost centers all over the places. And to be able to monitor product-wise is very complicated. You don't know who's the customer you're making more money with compared to others. And this way it becomes too complicated. See the, the teams laying teams, they just follow the board. But again, there's a skill training and all that. And we create even table utilization. You all know about Fast React and uh, how you do planning and all that. We plan tables. To maximize table utilization, we eliminate everything related to bundling sticker. In. We took it off the cutting tables. We created trolleys. Where it moves while I'm cutting, it moves on the side. Even for reshaping, we make it stand along small stations. Why I have to use the entire cutting room, cutting table, to dismobilize it totally for somebody to come and shape a couple pieces like this and all that? We create like the leather industry. You, you know, OJ sees about leather and apparel and home textiles and all that. So when you look at it, we have standalone stations, which saves a lot of space and maximizes table utilization in the cutting room as well. So when we start doing visual planning board by the cutting manager, he realized how much his tables are totally empty everywhere. So we have the length of the tables on the side, and we have the time scale on the top horizontally. horizontally. This is a genius idea from a guy like this. He said, let's put the idea into picture. So this is, a, and at the end, even we designed the trolleys and all that. Let me show you at the end. Uh, sorry. Uh, this is the bundle cards. So. So what we designed at the end, uh, I want to show you all this, but uh, standardized work. This is where we built all the SOP. How we practice everything. And beside that, we built all the technical procedures as well that Catanum must have. And we integrated all this into 5S ethical and technical standard auditing system where nothing will break. Because Bangladesh factory, my goodness, every day when a buyer comes, they spend two days in cleaning the place. Now we make it happy forever, sustainable. And we put a human resource on the top of it to monitor, not just the compliance. So uh, 
back from this. What's wrong with my system today? I think my system is very tired. One thing I want to show you, even we build the key knowledge, we built key knowledge, we said like all these stuff, based on these operators, we did for sewing, cutting, finishing, and all that, all the operating system. But we said, for all these operating system, what do they have something in common? The guy said, Charles, Mr. Raji will be happy probably. SMV. I said, ah, it means everybody in this company has to understand what it means SMV. How is built and why? We put it in the key knowledge. Second, teamwork is important. What's the importance of a teamwork? He said, put it in the key knowledge. The role of IE, put it in the key knowledge. Most of the people, they don't know the IE. Even. You, you, you put the IE under the charge of production manager, and he has no clue of engineering it. So how do you want to use the IE effectively? They end up that board or doing some clerical job, doing some formats for you, and at the end of the day, I better find the other job somewhere else. This is what it's all. We create a key knowledge where we said everybody in this company, besides fundamental and human rights and this and that, they should be aware of those key knowledge. So we designed them. And the most interesting one is, was the lead time, we, because our objective was one is the lead time. So we created a lead time structure. We defined all the processes. We eliminate a lot out of them. These are the processes related to value stream structure. And we have different routes. Some of them, they go on hangers. Some of them, they go bulk. Some of them, they don't. So it's a little bit complex. So what we did, we designed the roadmap. Roadmap related to information technical pack. You could see on the top in yellow color. And the bottom is all the lead time in the bottom. And some of them is going by truck or by trolley. And at the end of this, we designed even the information system where it lists down all the information in relation to every process. So saying this, okay, coming to the style. So what we did is we spent a lot of effort. So let me just clear one thing. You know, most of the project when we take you here about trial concept, right? Pilot concept. We said, you know, the consultant will come here, probably us or somebody else. He said, the consultant will come here. He will do pilot concept, and everything is supposed to happen. Pilot concept, I will tell you, it will never sustain because there's no structure. Pilot concept is related to a couple of people that you test out a new method, and he said, it's working. So what I did today, I changed our methodology. I said, we're not going to tell clients any more pilot concept because what we do, once we make a change to see how it happens, everybody's sitting outside and waiting for the output. How was the output? Oh, team concept is not good. Lean is not for me. But what I'm saying is here is a pilot concept. When we assess the mind map and we assess all these ideas, we need to test them out. The only time I test the practices, then I put the practice into a system, then I monitor it. For two, three hours, is my assumptions work fine, like the unproductive time, I eliminated the practices, the bundle handling, manipulation of the parts and all that. I reduce them. It means my method is okay. But what they did, most of the factory, they kept it. They were said, wow, new modular team and everything. And they started replicating it. But where's the style? Where's the skill? Where's the development of the people? Where's the operating system and all? They don't exist. So some people, you know, we said today, you know what? I'm going to eliminate this pilot concept. I'm going to call it only trial, where we test it out. And the next day, I will eliminate it, and I'll destroy the pilot concept. It's only to assess our assumptions. Because when we evaluate something, it's, it's before and after. And on that basis, today we eliminate, I say, I'm not going to take any more, any consulting, a call it pilot concept. Because there's mis misunderstanding. So pi the only time you're going to see output when you put structure in place. Leaders, not managers. Uh, when it comes to style, the company said, you know, what type of people we're looking for here? Leaders or managers? You know, managers, they manage. The status quo, nothing beyond that. But the leaders are people who grow people. It means they are teachers. They are able to educate others to grow and to progress. So you ask yourself, 
I think this is where the industry need to start thinking about it. You know, like, where's the leadership here? You know, leadership, a leader can, can make followers, but the followers cannot make a leader. If you think, you know, I get the best engineer here, and I get the best uh, CEO there, and all that, and I'm leader at the end. Still, because they're not leaders as well. So the leadership, you know, is very important for you in order to start to kick off any lean company or world-class manufacturing. The other issue is the 5S and ethical standard. We build it up as well into the program. So what I did is we took George manuals, all the standard, technical standards. We said, everybody's complaining about, give them to me. So we took them, we assessed them, and we built a chart of who's in charge of what. There's a full chart here, who's in charge of what. And then from that, we start creating training calendar. And from the training calendar, this is the assignment start. General manager, factory manager, worker, supervisor, engineer, everybody has a role to play in 5S ethical and technical standard related to the bike that you're dealing with. And we create a system to be dealt on daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, yearly basis. And the companies are assessed continuously on a daily basis to make sure everything falls in place. So you see there's so many titles in the bottom. Respect for people, I spoke about it in the morning. Uh, noon time, you're hungry? Good, I still have time. You know, I spoke about it, I said respect for people, it's sincere communication, it's trust and respect, it's like spirit of challenge, that's the respect for people. You know, like I've been with some companies like, uh, like Orient Fashion, PM Pro as well. You know, like I was so happy, even at Rodnik, I was a couple of days ago, you know, like you could see there's integration in like, the, in, you know, there's interrelation between people, management and all that, which make it pleasant environment to work. It means I know like this company, they could progress, it's a question of time. Things can change, but it's a question of time. And I know they have a deep breath and they're holding their breath because they know it's a question of time as well. But some other probably we had a problem with because it's not a question of time, it's a death or life, you know, make me change. But I cannot, I cannot put a gun in the heads of people and tell, learn, learn, quickly learn, because I have no choice. It's not. It's the relation that you have. It's the clear understanding and clarity of goals that we have between myself, the people around, the management, and all that. This is what makes it a pleasant environment to deal with and work with. And I know at the end of the day, nothing can stop you. But it's a question of time. You know, we always take a time to plan and all that, but when it comes, we have everything on hand like this now. It's easy for me to go and kick it and start implementation on the floor. But there's a soft skill to build. That takes time. You're not going to change your operator and your supervisor overnight. It's impossible. So respect. Decision based on fact, another factor, you know, like uh, in Toyota, we always said decision based on fact. How many times we judge things while we're sitting at our office instead of going to the floor? And these are the style of management. It means when your company put the principles and a philosophy of this is our philosophy and this is how we act in this company. We don't decide based on experience. We decide based on fact. We analyze situation because you're going to learn how to troubleshoot things and look at the, the, the casual factors that are impacting you or blocking you from performing against your strategic objective. The lead time, the, the, the continuous flow, the education of the people, the respect, the quality, you know. This is, this is the kind we take. Decision has to be based on fact. Those I'm not going to take you over the training program like, because it's a training program by itself. But just tell you, you need to pay attention when it comes to this. Decision has to be based on facts only. It means go to the floor and see by yourself. It's a reality check. Clear defined goals. We, uh, we define KPIs and KRI. Through, you remember yesterday I showed the three-dimensional view. We have KPI. Then we have KRA which is productive time, hours produced, and all that. Then we have the financial results in the bottom, where it gives you your value stream profit here at the end, including the cost, average cost. But this is, and we have a comparison as well, where we could run comparison against the target cost. But this is not enough, because wherever 
wherever you care RA comes from, they come from workers. So we create for performance measures for our supervisors. So we gave supervisor performance measures, and we educate them, and we gave them even the frequency when to monitor it. And even beside, look at it's a spoon feeding. Look what we did even. We gave them exactly even how to troubleshoot it when you have a deviation, what you should do. Then we gave them when you should go to the floor. Then we gave them guidelines for group leaders. When to measure it, to measure the balance weekly, every minute. You know, like in Bangladesh, like you have to educate them step by step to make it clear. And we took them into practice. It was a long way to go. It took us 18 months to do this, but we didn't do it by ourselves. We did only 50 days every factory, 56 days exactly. But the rest done by the factory people, from the management to the engineering department. But the champion was plant engineer. We took over this project, uh, the champion. So we gave a lot of guidance even. It's still under building now. We're just designing everything. We haven't implemented yet. From that, even problem solving, you're going to laugh now. You know, problem solving, everybody tells you, you go to the floor, you do PDCA, you do this, you do that. I said, yeah, right, yeah, right. It's very hard to teach people. But what we did in Bangladesh, we just map every problem in the company. We create for them the troubleshooting technique. We gave them everything. Go now, meet with this guy, and meet that guy, then do this, then assess it, then find the idea, then send the engineer, then implement it here. We gave them the PDCA and the right structure. You will see it and you will laugh probably. But it would be interesting for you too. So before the PDCA, we create a, this is the policy deployment that I talked about. It. We create four layers of management, including operators in the bottom. Can you see it in the back? See, we, we created for supervisor leader where we gave them what they have to monitor. We create for supervisor and manager what they have to monitor, including engineering and all that. We create to GM as well, area they need to monitor. So everyone, you know, like we know casual factors can happen. So what we did, we took all the troubles of the company, we segmented them out into four layers of management, starting from the CEOs where they manage strategic plans. And this is how we define the roles of every person in the company toward the continuous improvement. And this is the guidance related to material, machinery, methods, and manpower. So every problem can happen. You get the effective of it. So it means if you find the problem, increase, reject, uh, and rework, you need to assess probably uh, defective material. You need to assess other area. Then this is the tools to be used. And then you have the plan, do, check, and act. And you could get it all here. I could sell it if you want. Just kidding. It's all here. And even we gave them guidance, and at the end we put it all together onto weekly progress report, which leads all the allowable costs that make the costing formula to the KRA, then it all links from other departments with the KRA to the KPI that you were looking for. So this is in terms of benefits. Is it interesting or no? Have you seen this before? No? Is it new for you? There's a lot of work, right? So coming back to the staff, this is more interesting too. Cooperation and teamwork, which is part of the respect for people, so which will allow cooperation and teamwork. Roles and responsibility. Now, putting all these systems together, Creating KPIs and all that, creating measurement system, putting an operating concept, creating, creating, said, whoa, whoa, now, who's going to do what in this company? Let's look at about this gentleman, this lady, this gentleman here. What's the skill is and what we're asking them in the future to be, to achieve our strategic objective. So we designed roles for supervisors. For every person in the company, including operators, cutting team chair, cutting laying team as well, what's happened? Key responsibility, 
supervisor. You know what we did, supervisor? We said, look, we want supervisor to adopt SOP. We want supervisor to mount the quality randomly all the time. You know, like you have a 20 operator, keep turning around, cycle time start from the end, and balance it out. Uh, look at the cycle time, look at the SOP, is it the same? You know, there are some criteria which they are part of our allowable cost. But again, you see on the side, capacity building. You remember I developed key knowledge? So it means supervisor, she needs to understand the key knowledge. Then she needs to learn about the job specific, which is the operating system. Then she's able or he's able to engage into his responsibility. Then we said to ourselves, but hold on a second now. The supervisor handles bundles, the supervisor runs here, and the supervisor does this. So what we did in those companies, we mapped the supervisor's activity for almost a week. We saw it because you cannot figure out what's happening in the system as well. But when you look at the supervisor, what they're doing on a daily basis, trust me, you discover a lot of negligence from other processes. And it's all done by the supervisor on great heart. So we mapped them to be able to fix those systems in order for us to engage your supervisors at the end. So we designed this, and beside that, to help the supervisor, we create all the, we gave them guidelines kit. Very interesting. They became engineers. <laughs> We gave uh, supervisor guidelines kit, supervisor key responsibility, classification of motion, which you all you know in the work study, the eight rules to improve sewing operation, the eight rules to improve manual operation, the eight rules to implement new method, balance the technique, supervisor daily auditing checklist, uh, team members uh, wrote. You know, everything has been designed in the product, and trust me, it wasn't too complicated to teach them because operate supervisor that went into on-job training about how to build work methods with the engineering team. And when we start doing micro motion, not micro motion, operation scanning, they start seeing repeat motion, repeat activity. Yeah, I could do it this way, that way. There was some kind of training that we have started with, and we gave them the, the entire kit. So this is their kit. Today you will see it in Bangladesh. Every supervisor has a small booklet like this. It's in their pocket. Every time they get a problem, they open it, they just read it. With the time, it becomes memorized. And they found themselves, they're better than production managers in Bangladesh. So production manager was enforced to learn better, to become better than them. Otherwise, uh, they were taken over. So this is a kind of a styling that uh, the staffing, where we designed all this. Then we move into shared core value. And this is like, before I hit the skill, like now we designed the structure, the strategy, the concept, the methodology, the roles, the operating systems, and all that. Now, what are the shared core values? We summarize it all under one. We build a culture to create a challenge against the strategic objective. And what we share is respect and trust, fair policies. We share value in relation to KPIs, lean tools, commitment to education. So it's a connectivity between management support. I didn't finish. Huh? If I slow down, I'm getting tired from I slept yesterday at 3 o'clock watching football. Doing the seminar, preparing, and all go through around the continuous improvement. So, what we need a culture in the company, a mindset in the company, total different, where pull production as per internal and external customers, don't overproduce, maintain continuous flow of the value chain. Only, you know, value added activity, which I was talking about. Any SMV driven value, it's accepted, otherwise, you just eliminate it. Or you charge it to the buyer. Very simple formula. Don't complicate my life. You end up in a factory, you have only half of the people on the floor, no value, but the rest of them on SMV. Troubleshoot and interruption, any interruption to the value stream. It means anything, but this is how can we make it all happen, the culture. We change our list of waste. So we don't have seven type of waste anymore. This is our lean in the garment industry. So we're not Toyota here. Because Toyota has seven type of waste. It's a little bit complicated when you look at because some of those ways, they repeat in every activity. So what we did, we segregated. So if I look at here, we train everybody in the company. Six forbidden acts are not allowed here. We created posters all over the place, and they went live into training. And I'm doing it here as well under OGC member. No worker can be waiting. No SMB can be on the floor. No bundle can be waiting for retention time. No machine can be idle. No worker can be idle and all that. How long does it take if you keep this in mind and walk the entire day, bum, 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 problem, problem, problem? 
you will see how many problems you have on a daily basis and try this. When you get those slides, please try. So it changed. No, today we talk about waste, only this. There's no other waste for us. From that, we linked it all together to one unified management system. It's all the blah, blah that I was saying. I don't know if it's blah, blah, but everything I've been saying, we put it all together under one unified management system. What I mean, it means we have activities, we have a people. So all the procedures are built into one shot. So when I get somebody in the company, when I get somebody in the company, if I take a cutting room, if I take stores even, cutting room or sewing, I take the cutting room, you see? I have 5S and ethical technique. I have a planning activity. I have operating tools. I have quality issues. I have raw materials issues. I have Kanban flow, and I have continuous improvement culture. And we have all the people on the side here. There's cutting in charge. There's cutting lead team leaders. There's cutting teams. There are industrial engineering. There are QC. There are mechanic. There are people involved, human resources. So all the tasks are here. Under, you're all creating job descriptions and all that. So the companies, you know, when you come here to, when you're traveling to Gurgaon, you have a big board tells you how you go directions, you know, on, at the toll gate. Same thing here. You go up into the cutting room, huge poster. So when I want to train the merchandiser, merchandise has a function in relation to cutting to this and that. So I'll take the merchandise, come with me to the floor. This is the cutting room. Learn your job. This is what you should do, and this is what you should do. In it. This is how we're training people now, on the job directly. You take the engineer, his involvement as well. You take him into the whole structure. So we created the whole unified management system, but this cannot be done until you build everything that I showed you before. Now, how we'll take all this into scale? Capacity building and transformation, this is what it's all about. You could see the efforts and the hard work at the beginning to build the structure that is in line with your strategic objectives. But how you make it all happen? It's very easy. You know exactly what you want. You know exactly what you want to develop. So what we did is, I don't know if it's the cable, it's taking time. What we did is we create the whole training program to merge people into the new culture. This can happen in six months, can happen in two months, can happen in 10 years if you want. Because the big job is to exactly know where you're going. And it's easy after to transfer it, and this is where you start realizing the quality people that you have in-house working for you versus the ones that will never learn. Because remember, everyone from top to bottom, they have to pass the exams. And I'm serious about it. You know, our project in NASDAQ was very complicated because, you know, the UK retailers, they had a lot of pressure about wage, wages of Bangladeshi workers. And NGO, they try to find any fault with any bias. And next day, you will see reports in newspapers. So our project was very critical to make sure what we built is sustained and workers, they got it in their mind. Because the NGO, what they do, they will take workers on the side when they're going home and they start serving and assessment, investigating about the pay, the, the mentality in the company, how do they deal with you, do they abuse you, do they force you on overtime and all that, trust me. It's very critical. And today we have a survey is going on in Bangladesh, and the result will be in two, three weeks. And we don't know what's the question, and we don't know who's asking who. But we made it clear to everyone, I could consider a lean practitioner only people pass this three type of exams here, which I call the fundamental knowledge of the company, your principle, your philosophy, the human rights, the labor law, the safety issue, the five S and ethicals and all that. Those are everybody's concern in a company. Second, 
when the people pass in, I want to make sure all my key knowledge being transmitted to all of them being transferred, and they all pass and they understand. It means I ask anybody, SMB, oh, you do this, or what's the role of engineering? Everybody knows it in the company. This is very important to understand each other. The third time part is on the job specific. It means learn what you should do your operating system. What do you do in terms of quality? What do you do in terms of problem solving technique? What do you do? What do you do? So this is said. If everybody, so we gave them the list of all people in our project, they pass all these exams, and those we call them today, lean practitioner, and they're going to have a reward uh, in October, end of October. Those are lean practitioners, not somebody just you put him in a team concept as you usually tell we're lean. It's much harder than this, trust me. It's much harder. That's why I get tired, like when people, they tell me this, I'm very good for you, I'm happy, because I know where they are. So you see here, key knowledge. Then you have the key knowledge. If I zoom it a little bit. Importance of cycle time in SMV, predetermined motion time study, role of IE, role of mechanic. The, what's the importance of Kanban? It means to maintain WIP uh, raw materials and all that, space-wise, cash flow-wise, and all that. And we create even, what's the difference between productive time and unproductive time? Operators, they understand. What it means, it means my SMV was driven by. Then how absenteeism is important even, and how does it affect your cost? If you want to increase your salary next month, you know, how can I do it? Then understanding costing, profitability, and the importance of teamwork. These are common knowledge in the company as the new mindset. From that, we move into the job specific. So you see the job specific for supervisor first, related to 5S structure setup for every department and every structure. I'd like to show you some pictures. I'll show you my friend from Google. Oh, no pictures. Global Knowledge Center. You know, we get people even, they're getting a reward for Kaizen. People start getting engaged from the floor level to make improvement in the company and they're earning money. Every idea pays. This was a new policy, fair to employees. Just bring your idea on board and get money as long as sustain after two months. Then the unified management system. So let me move here. See, these are the manuals upside down. These are related to safety issues. Ethical storyboard. This is training school, huh? You will see. One team, one mission. Uh, this is the manual that I talk about for supervisor, technical uh, guidelines, the kit. The project, lean project, uh, operating system of the cutting room. This is the school. All these key knowledge drivers. So for them as was, my picture is very clear. There is too dark. Uh, for them, it was very simple. I'll get somebody uh, inside from that door. I'll get him from the other door as a lean thinker. During the key knowledge, they have a session. We started from top management. They had a session of spending a couple weeks on the floor assessing the six forbidden facts. Once they learned that, then we brought them into problem solving technique, applying the guidelines of PDCA. Then we took them into action. Until they really mastered, then we said, we have a team on board now. You got the consultant, you got the champion, you got the engineering, you got the management now on board and all that. And this is where we start developing people before we move to the job specifics. So you see, this is the human system that I showed you, the critical success factors. This is their matrix of training, the one similar to the one I showed you now. No, it's uh, 15 uh, to... Oh, Almost finished. So it's all here. Oh, it's fell asleep. This is their training school. And this is all the KPIs of different departments and all that. So this is Mr. Nitin uh, Arora from Gurgaon. Nitin, Nitin, KDS directors. I'm almost at the... So all this, we put it back all together into Global Knowledge Center, and from that, we start transforming people and making changes in the company to lean manufacturing. And this is what we achieve, criteria of selection of good people to develop them, to train them, to enable them, to engage, to perform, 
and to commit to continuous improvement. And you see Lean Transformation Progress Board, every company has one like this, to show just the progress from everything I showed you now. And the fact sheet, I have videos even from operator, you hear operator, they start adopting even 5S and Kanban in their own house. Bangladeshi operator, you don't believe it. This is the fact sheet as a result. This is only 56 days effort from our side, 18 months from the factory side. This is KDS where it is scoring 61%. These are the other factory. And let me zoom it only on the KPIs and I'm gonna end it a little bit. Uh, you could see here the KPIs almost of the factories. Shorten lead time minus 16%, increased labor utilization 16%. Remember, they've been already in lean before and this is a new action in lean. But if you look at the other 48%, 7%, 57%, if you look at sewing even, Look at cutting rooms, 55, 112% increase in everything. I'll tell you in Delhi, your factory here, there's at least 140% increase in cutting room. But until today, I'm zipped out. Because if you look at your cutting table, are used for everything except spread. I'm telling you that the sky has no limit, trust me. As long as you understand what you're looking for. So this is, this is where we're all, and this is where it's become the lean transformation. All the practitioners, they have to pass all the exams and all these factories, how they've been transformed, 80% in the cutting, 80% in the sewing. And if the cutting, the Kaizen policy is in place. And on that basis, we evaluate the company as a lean practitioner. I'm on. Oh, sure, sure. Every idea counts and never is good. And it's never enough. So when the whole organization thinks the same way, you are unstoppable. So it takes a lot of brainstorming. I said, well, first you need brainwashing. Then you move into brainstorming. And this is what it takes a lot, which is the 80% of lean evaluation to score yourself as a lean practitioner, which all related to the seven internal aspects to build together, connect them, and create one unified management system for lean organization. And that will drive your sustained profitability and will drive your customer satisfaction. I hope uh, I didn't bore you that much. Uh, look, there's a lot to cover, but uh, two hours. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll see you on different subject later. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it.